is elected. Oh, yeah, we because, already know the cities are okay. in danger. And, and we, we played these spoke about John Heilman and and we we played these small clips let's play longer clips to get a full sense of this interview take a look Biden is I, I don't even like to mention Biden because he's not controlling anything who, who do you they think is pulling him. Biden's strings uh, is it former Obama people officials? that you've never heard of people that are in the dark shadows people that oh, what are, does that mean that sounds like conspiracy theory dark shadows no, what is that? people that you haven't heard of they're, they're people that are on the streets, there are people that are controlling the streets. We had somebody get on a plane from a certain city this weekend, and in the plane, it was almost completely loaded with, with thugs wearing these dark uniforms, black uniforms with gear and this and that. They're, they're on a plane. Where's the where's this? I'll tell you sometime, but I, I, it's under investigation right now. I think the suburbs are in danger if Biden is elected. Oh, yeah, we already know the cities are in okay. danger, but so, are the suburbs in danger? Because they say that's fear-mongering on the part of I know the suburbs. Look, Westchester was ground zero, okay, for what they were trying to do. They were trying to destroy the suburban, beautiful place, the American dream, really. They want low-income housing, and with that comes a lot of other problems, including crime. May not be nice You're not to say, but I'll say people are criminals, though. No, I'm not saying that at all, but it does, there is a level of violence that you don't see. So you have this beautiful community in the suburbs, including women, right? Women, they want security. I ended where they build low-income housing project right in the middle of your neighborhood. I ended it. If Biden gets in, he already said it's going to go at a much higher rate than ever before. And you know who's going to be in charge of it? Cory Booker. That's going to be nice, okay? Shooting the guy in the back many times, I mean, couldn't you have done something different? Couldn't you have wrestled? You know, I mean, in the meantime, he might have been going for a weapon. And, you know, there's a whole big thing there. But they choke. Just like in a golf tournament, they miss a three-foot... You're puck. not comparing it to golf because, of course, that's no, what the media I'm saying, saying people yeah. choke. I'm saying people choke. He did. He compared shooting a black man in the back seven times to missing a three-foot golf putt. Let's, let's say that again. Donald Trump, the president of the United States, compared shooting a man seven times in the back with missing a three-foot golf putt. Um, and, and on the suburbs, low-income housing, uh, crime comes with it. And as Laura was trying to correct him, he said it might not be nice, but crime comes. And then he just blurts out women. Like, we've got to protect the white women. Again, uh, Gene Robinson, this is a racist trope not out of 1955. It's out of, like, 1855. It's out of 1870. I mean, this is, you know, this is... And, and I'm just going to say one other one. The dark shadows. Planes completely loaded. With, 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 it sounds like bad guys from Avenger movies. It is so yes. unmoored. It is so out of, like, right field. It is straight from the pages of QAnon. And I just, I just wonder, I've just got to say, my friends and relatives that still think this guy is worthy of their vote, Gene, I must say, mm -hmm. I, 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 I didn't understand it three years ago. It's getting even more difficult to understand today. That man on that interview was completely unhinged. Yes. I mean, those, you know, the, the separate this into two buckets. The, the, the stuff about the dark shadows, people in the dark shadows, you, you know, you've never heard of them. And she's, she's like puzzled about this, this you know basically stop this sounds like a conspiracy theory and but he keeps going because that's totally unhinged um the rest of it is just flat out racism of a kind flat out that, racism yeah. white supremacy i mean of a kind that you know that that strom thurmond in my youth in south carolina was more sophisticated and subtle than that Okay, he would be, he would have been more sophisticated and subtle in his racism than uh, than, than than the president of the United States is right now. He's just completely. But this and this has to be coming from 
some somewhere deep inside. I, I think I don't think this is just tactical or strategic no. or whatever. I just think this is who Donald, Donald Trump is. He's just a flat out racist and and you know of the eighteen seventy variety. Of, you know. Yeah, this is this is not latent. This is overt. Uh, it, and uh, Mark Leibovich, um, we could talk about uh, him comparing the shooting of a black man seven times. Ah, it's like missing a three foot putt. They choked. They just choked. Uh, that's one thing. But again, we talk about the suburbs and bringing low income housing into the suburbs and talking about the crime that comes with it and talking about the women like we have to protect our white women. Um, he, he sees that he's down in the suburbs. He thinks that this is how he wins votes in the suburbs without understanding this is exactly why he's been losing white educated voters in the suburbs since Charlottesville. Yeah, and if you look at public opinion on Trump and his various issues, what he what he really lost on this summer was whenever he talked about race, um, whenever you know there was an incident around you know Lafayette Park around the demonstrations in June and the late spring, uh, that's when he really lost with suburban voters. And I think, I mean, people will focus on, you know, the bites of, of you know, that interview last night. I mean, the, the golf putt thing, the three foot putt thing. But, but really just the entirety of the riff is the kind of thing that suburban voters or any voters, really certainly anyone who is persuadable in any direction would see and wonder, I mean, is, is there is this going anywhere good, right? I mean, the plain look of the people dressed in black, right, is, is yeah. I mean, remember, remember when Ross Perot said that thing about, um, you know, he, he kind of said George Bush was going to disrupt my daughter's wedding, and that became the thing that people focused on for, you know, for weeks in that election in 1992. Um, I mean, this was an entire interview of that, and, and really you sort of wonder, I mean, look, the contours of the race seem to be coming into focus in the last few days. I mean, maybe the polls were tightening after the conventions. Maybe a contrast was being drawn in a way that that could have been a path to victory and actually setting the course, the race on a course uh, that's in a better place for the president. But you just sort of wonder, like, what something like this this does to any kind of unified message and any kind of sort of you know place that the the Trump campaign is trying to bring where their message is. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're exactly right. This kind of talk, uh, Ross Bro, when he talked about Black Panther scaling the walls of, of his yard to disrupt his daughter's wedding, I mean, that finished his, his campaign. We've, we've got, Trent Lott says uh, a stray word uh, or two complimenting Strom Thurmond, saying the country ends his career. Um, you have people on TV that have said far less than what Donald Trump said last night, ended their career. Donald Trump, I guarantee you, anybody, anybody on television compared the killing of a black man seven times to missing a three foot putt, they'd, they'd lose their job by the end of the day. If a governor said that, if a university president said that, if you had a CEO saying, oh, boy, the low income housing in, in suburbs, that like white women are going to be in trouble and crime is going to go up. They would lose their job. The board would vote them off by the end of the day. A high school football coach, if he said such things or she said such things, would lose their jobs by the end of the day. But Donald Trump is still president of the United States. Boy, I, hey, so John Heilman, a couple things. To take from Donald Trump's interview with Laura last night, um, one, first of all, he made the mistake of telling the truth at, at, at the beginning. Whoops. When he said that this has been going on in Portland for years, yeah. and it has been going on in Portland for right. years. She said, well, really, it's worse the last 90 days, right? <laughs> no, no. Uh, but then you get to, to the, the, the heart of the matter, uh, as we're going through a lot of 80s songs, and we'll do the Don Henley one there. Um, he, he, he then compares the shooting of a black man uh, seven times in the back with a putter choking no. on a three-foot putt. Uh, and then he yeah. says, talks about people moving, poor people moving into the suburbs and bringing crime. Mm. Uh, and it, what, what he actually, he said, low-income housing, you have a lot of problems, crime, a level of violence that you don't see. And then, of course, the the um, 
money line, the, the, the poll quote was when he started talking about the danger of women, the old standard 1870s, <laughs> we've got to protect are white women from black people, which is what he said. So yes. this isn't even mm. 1950s mm. bigotry. He's going back to the 1800s here, uh, so much so that Laura Ingram is trying to walk him through this. But the entire thing is so extraordinarily offensive and retrograde uh, that... Uh, uh, that I, I have no idea what century this man is from and how he thinks that sort of talk wins elections. Yeah, good morning, Joe. Mika, hi. Um, <laughs> hi. Yeah, I mean, I think it's easy, Joe, maybe to miss. I think it, I, I mean, the, the, the housing one, that, which is obviously in line with his thinking about this, he's been talking about the whole destruction of the suburbs, low income housing is going to destroy the suburbs. He's made moves on policy consistent with this, right? It's totally reflective of his racism and, and it's out front, right? It's basically, you know, the poor out people front. housing, that poor people's homes, low income housing comes to the, to the white suburbs. The black people come here and destroy this, this idealized 1950s, leave it to beaver notion of the homogenous white White suburbs. We've heard that from him before, and this was a very extreme version. Again, your point: when you're getting called a race, when you get, when you've got Laurie Ingram having to throw you a lifeline on your racism, you know you're in trouble. That's when you're. That's time to like kind of cash out on life. But the other, the golf thing. It's easy. I mean, it's, it's so grotesque that it's easy to miss the racism in it in a way, right? He's equating right. the value of a, of, a, of a black, an unarmed black man's life that, with that of a, of, a, of a golf putt, right? He's basically said those are the, the level of injury a golfer, a historically white sport golfer, missing a three-foot three put, foot putt is equivalent in terms of the harm it causes, in terms of like what's at stake there as the life of a unarmed black man who's been shot seven times in the back. It's, I mean, maybe it's, maybe it's obvious to everybody, but if you really focus on it, that's a thing where it's not completely obvious how racist it is until you think it through. And, you know, he's getting to the point now where he, he can't control these eruptions of the nakedness of his racism. And again, I mean, all through that interview last night, and there was another incredible exchange with Laura Ingram about, you know, dark forces on airplanes yeah. flying to the convention dressed in black, a lot of references to black in the in the discussion, who are coming allegedly to Washington to disrupt his his convention, which I think was stolen from some discredited Facebook meme. It's just that his racism now is, he's so desperate that he's not even uh, trying try to cloak his racism in the way that he used to at least try a little bit to speak in code. He's now just gone all out, straight up, on TV, with Laurie Ingram, bigot. And I think, you know, and we're still 64 days out. So just imagine where we're going to get between now and Jeez. November.